All right, guys. This is Steven, and I have a very exciting science tutorial for you guys today. And more than a tutorial, though, this is going to be a foundation lesson about circuitry, electricity, and electronics. And from this, we're going to branch off into some other more advanced areas. But today, we're just going to cover the foundations of electricity. Uh, at a, I guess, kind of abstract level. We're not going to talk about too many things uh, with really, really complicated physics, but <clears throat> I guess let's, uh, let's start. So I'm going to assume that you've heard of uh, atoms before, and I'm just going to quickly draw one here, not to scale. So if this is an atom, you know we have protons, which are these positively charged guys, and then we have electrons, which are these much smaller uh, negatively charged guys. And sometimes the protons and electrons can become separated in such a way that you have a positive or negatively charged material. And this is the case in, uh, you see something like this in, in batteries, which is what we're going to talk about here. And so what I'm going to do is, in order to help you understand electricity, I'm going to use something very, very similar to it, which is water. And this is how I'm going to draw water with, like, blue pen. And uh, so let's take a look at how electricity and water are almost exactly the same thing, except only by our analogy. So I'm going to say that in modern electricity, you hear a lot of people say, oh, electricity is the flow of electrons. Well, that's not necessarily true. In modern electricity, we talk about the flow of charges, and they can be uh, positive charges, which would be the flow of protons, or they can be negative charges, which would be the flow of electrons. And in, in engineering and places like this, we actually talk more about the proton side just as a convention. It doesn't actually matter which one you're talking about as long as everything that you calculate uses the same direction. Okay, so we're going to assume that electricity is the flow of positive charges towards more negative charged areas. So if we have a group of positive charges, they're going to tend to flow to negatively charged areas. Okay, that's going to be our, our backing principle. Okay, and that's just because think of a magnet. If you had uh, two magnets, then the positive always attracts to the negative. It's the same kind of thing. Magnetism and electricity are very similar. And, or at least they're very closely related, not necessarily similar. So the first thing I want to talk about is called current. And uh, current is what we talk about, or it is what we're describing when we talk about electricity. Current is the, the flow of charges, be them uh, protons or electrons, okay? And current is made up of both the speed that things flow and, as a result, the volume. Okay, because the faster it's flowing, the more volume of current there will be overall. So let's look at an example. If we have a, um, a pipe that is filled with water, like this. So the faster the water is flowing, the more current we have in the pipe. And that's the same in electricity except that instead of water particles, we would have, or water molecules, we would have protons that are flowing, okay? So that's, that's all that current is, it's just the flow. And we measure current as, uh, the unit that we measure current is amperes or amps, and the symbol for current is I, okay? So let's take a look at a very related concept which is called resistance. Resistance. And I apologize for my wonderful handwriting. So resistance is uh, the, it's a measurement describing how, how easy it is for charge to flow through a given material. Every material has what's called a, a resistivity, which is how resistant is it. So Something like, you know, copper you see in wires, which means it has a low resistance, but something like dirt has a really high resistance. So that means it resists the flow. An easy way to think about this is the width of our pipe. So if we're looking down the end of the pipe, 
and it's really wide, then we can fit a whole lot of water in here. Similarly, if we have a low resistance, we can fit lots and lots and lots of protons, okay? Whereas if we have a really, really tiny pipe, we can only fit a little bit of water and similarly only a little bit of protons. So this is a high resistance over here and this is a low resistance. So it's kind of the opposite of the size, but just keep in mind that that's really what we're talking about here. So this is different than the size of the wire. This is representing the resistance. So if we have a really, really big pipe that flows and then all of a sudden gets pinched into a really, really little pipe like this, then we, and we have a ton of water in here, suddenly only a little bit of water can fit through the pipe. So this area right here has a higher resistance to water or to electricity, to electric charge flow than this area does. So that's all that we're talking about when we talk about resistance. So the, the unit for resistance is the ohm, which is drawn as the Greek letter omega as a capital omega and the symbol for resistance is just the letter r okay so following this we have something called voltage and many of you have heard this word before i'm sure it's on your batteries nine volt battery it's on uh power lines danger high voltage or you've heard of um lightning however many volts come from lightning. Voltage is talking about energy. And specifically, it's a difference in energy between two points in a circuit or a component of some kind. And it talks about the difference specifically in, uh, in potential energy. Okay, So a way we can model this is if we have water flowing down a slope where up here it's a higher height so this is the ground right here and this is some height h above the ground so the water flows down this hill from an area where its potential energy is higher because potential energy just means how much energy will i gain if i go down this hill so at the bottom the potential energy is very low because you can't flow downwards anymore, whereas at the top, it's very high. So we're flowing from a high energy area to a low energy area, okay? So the, the change in height here kind of shows what, what voltage is. Voltage is the difference in energy of two places on a circuit, okay? So you're not really measuring how much, it's different than current because it's not how much electricity is in here, it's how much energy uh, does it take to move the electrons from this point to this other point? It's similar to that, but voltage is probably one of the diffi most difficult concepts for people to grasp, grasp eh, when uh, learning about electricity because it's so easy to get it confused with current. But the two are, are completely separate, and you can have one without the other in some circumstances, but they do depend on each other, and that's what we're gonna talk about next. So keep in mind, the symbol for voltage is V, and the unit of voltage is the volt, very creatively named. And uh, so, ah uh, yes, one more thing I wanna talk about is called power, and I'm sure that many of you are familiar with hearing about power, but you probably think it's some something like current or something like voltage, when in reality it's very different than both of those. Uh, power is the rate that energy is transferred by the electric circuit, by some component in the electric circuit. Every component in the electric circuit transfers power, whether it takes in power or it puts out power, okay? Now, the power can either go to some external device that you're powering, like if you plug in a hair dryer into the wall, then the hair dryer is putting out power in the form of uh, both heat and blowing air. Or if you are putting power across a resistor, then you are dissipating all the power as heat, okay? So power in terms of water is like if we have a pipe and then we have that pipe flow into a turbine, 
like this. This is a little water wheel. And then this water wheel is connected to a battery somewhere. Okay. So the water flows across this and pushes the turbine, which spins like this, and that charges the battery. Okay. So it's it's transferring the energy of flowing water to electricity in this case. But power can also be dissipated as heat. We could just be turning this water wheel and the friction would give off heat, okay? So that's that's what power is like in terms of water. So power, we're always going to describe it in watts. And the symbol for power is P. And we have a nice little equation that relates uh, power, voltage, current, and resistance that we're going to get to in a minute. So this guy named... Georg Ohm, who is a German physicist, discovered the relationship between voltage, current, and resistance. And that is that voltage in any point in any circuit is equal to the current flowing through that point times the resistance. Okay. And this is a huge, huge discovery that changed everything that we know. And... He did this before he had any of our modern instruments or anything like that. So it's even more impressive. And uh, so similarly, you can say that current is equal to voltage divided by resistance and vice versa for resistance is equal to voltage divided by current. And a guy named uh, Gustav Kirchhoff expanded on Ohm's law and he has some really, really cool laws that we're going to look into. But a very important one that we should talk about is how to solve for power. So power is simply uh, the square of current times resistance. Or you could substitute in this I to get that power is equal to voltage times current. So for any given element in your circuit, the voltage going across that element, so how far the water has to fall down, times the current, so times how much water is actually in there, tells you how much power is either being used or absorbed, depending on whether it's positive or negative power. Okay, so why don't we check out some cool example circuits, and in the next videos we'll look at some cool analysis techniques and how to build circuits to do various things. So let's build our example circuit. We'll start off with a battery, very simple. I like to draw batteries like this because you can see the positive and negative end. Remember we said electrons, or sorry, protons are going to flow out the positive end. Another way to draw a battery is using, I'll show you over here outside of our circuit, is using two uh, cells like this where the top one is positive and the bottom one is negative. And you have wires coming out of each one. So we're going to have um, something very simple. Our voltage source or battery is going to flow into a resistor and the symbol for that is just a jagged line like this okay and then it's just going to flow right back in to the back so this isn't a very good idea to do something like this it's kind of a waste but for the sake of example we're just going to do some basic calculations here okay so what if I tell you that you're using a 5 volt battery and you've hooked up a 1 ohm resistor. Then I ask you what is the current I through the circuit? How would you figure that out? Well, we know that voltage and resistance are related through Ohm's law V equals IR. So we can plug in the values that we know to find the ones that we don't. So 5 is equal to 1 times I. So I is equal to 5 amps. Now, those of you that know something about electricity will know that there's something horrible happening here. And that is that, um, well, first of all, I should say that the current in a circuit like this one, where it's just a loop, a, a one, one loop like this, the current is the same everywhere in it. That means that the same I is going into this resistor as is coming out. And that makes sense because if you have a pipe, 
like this one, that at one point gets narrow and then widens out again, the, all the same amount of water that goes into it has to come out of it, okay? So this water that goes in also has to come out. Ignore the little hill here, because there's not, not really meant to be one. So the problem is that we have a huge amount of current going through this. How much? 5 amps. But what does that actually mean? Well, let's look at our equation for power. What if I tell you that almost all resistors are rated, meaning they're measured to only be able to accept a power of 0 0.25 watts. Anything more than this, and they will go boom. They'll either catch on fire, or they'll explode, or short out, or break the rest of your circuit. It's just bad. You really, really don't want to do that. Well, we said before that power is equal to voltage times current, or I squared R. So R power is equal to voltage, which is 5 volts, times our current, which is 5 amps. So that's going to give us 25 watts, which is 100 times more than our resistor can take. So it's a little bit bigger than 0.25. So in this circuit right here, we're we're gonna go boom. <laughs> you could you could try this at home, but I really really would not recommend it. It's it's bad. The fire the fire means it's bad. So this is a quick little little example. I'm gonna show you some techniques for um, evaluating circuits in the next video, and then we're gonna build some circuits to do cool things, and we'll introduce more components that will let us eventually design a computer if you follow my logic gate series so thank you for watching i hope this helped explain some basic principles to you and if you have any questions comments or criticisms feel free to put them in the comment section if you have a very complicated question that you think i should answer in a video then send me a message that says science question so thanks for watching Give me a like, a thumbs up, a subscribe. Show your friends and say, haha, you too can learn electricity.